Hello and welcome to GM Service Know-How. I'm Lynn McCall. In this program, we're going to examine dual-stage airbag systems and how they operate. We'll also look at how to diagnose and repair the systems and some special precautions you should be aware of when handling the airbag inflator modules and related components. Of course, the airbag is just one part of occupant protection systems used in GM vehicles. For maximum protection during a collision, it is important that all of the vehicle's safety and restraint systems operate properly and that safety belts are always used. Designed in safety systems include vehicle crush zones that are made to absorb some of the energy of an impact before it reaches the passenger compartment. The passenger compartment itself is stiffened to protect the occupants by acting as a safety cage. The safety cage may also include reinforcing beams in the vehicle doors. The steering wheel and column are designed to compress downward so that they absorb energy during a collision. Knee bolsters are positioned to help restrain the lower torso of front seat occupants by absorbing the energy through the front seat occupant's upper legs. Each of these items is an important part of a vehicle's overall occupant protection system and must be inspected for damage after a collision. The seat belt remains the central and a crucial component of the occupant protection system in today's vehicles. As you know, the Supplemental Inflatable Restraint, or SIR system, supplements the protection offered by the seatbelt system. The SIR system may contain several inflator modules located throughout the vehicle. The frontal SIR system includes the steering wheel and the instrument panel inflator modules. Each of these modules contains an airbag to protect the front seat occupants when a vehicle is involved in a collision of sufficient force to deploy the frontal SIR system. Some vehicles are also equipped with side impact modules. The front side impact inflator modules may be located either in the left and right front doors. Or on newer vehicles, they are in the outside portion of the front seat backs. More recent vehicles may also be equipped with rear inflator modules on the left and right side. In addition to inflator modules, some vehicles use seatbelt pretensioners. The pretensioner uses a gas operated piston that tightens the seatbelt in the event of a collision. This reduces the distance between the occupant and the seatbelt when an inflator module is deployed. As you may remember from your previous training on airbag systems, there are four states of frontal SIR deployment. This remains true for dual stage SIR deployment. The first state is before deployment. In this stage, the frontal SIR system is in a state of readiness, performing continuous self-diagnosis. When the SIR sensor network and the system controller detect a frontal collision of sufficient force, the system enters the second state. During this state, the frontal airbag modules are deployed. In the third state, during restraint, the force of the impact causes the head and upper torso of the occupant to move forward onto the inflated airbag. During this third state, the knee bolsters may also prevent an individual from sliding in a forward and downward direction. The fourth state is after impact, when the airbags deflate. At this point, the crash event data is stored in the controller for incident analysis. Side impact inflator modules have the same four states of operation as the frontal airbag inflator modules and function in a similar manner. One difference is that the left and right side impact modules can deploy independently of each other. During a typical side collision, the airbag may be deployed only on the side of impact. On vehicles equipped with rear side impact modules, each of the rear side modules deploys at the same time as its corresponding front side module. 
In this program, we'll concentrate on the dual stage version of the frontal SIR system. We'll begin by reviewing the frontal components. The components of the dual stage SIR system are similar to those used in the conventional single stage SIR systems. But as you'll see, there are some important differences. The dual stage frontal SIR system consists of the steering wheel inflator module and the instrument panel inflator module. Supporting components are the airbag indicator in the instrument panel cluster, the steering wheel module coil, the sensing and diagnostic module or SDM, and the electronic frontal sensor or EFS. Then there's the wiring harnesses and the steering wheel and column. The SDM IP module, steering wheel module, steering wheel module coil, and the connecting wires make up the frontal deployment loops. The dual stage frontal SIR system uses an airbag indicator in the instrument panel cluster. The sensing and diagnostic module, or SDM, is the control center for the entire SIR system. It is mounted at various locations depending on the vehicle model. Typically, it is mounted on the floor pan below the front passenger seat or below the center console. The SDM uses signals from internal sensors as well as external sensors mounted at strategic locations within the vehicle. The number of wires running to the SDM and the type used varies depending upon the number of sensors and inflator module deployment loops in a specific vehicle. The external sensor used for dual stage operation is the electronic frontal sensor, or EFS. In the event of a frontal collision, the SDM monitors the signal from the EFS and uses the information when determining deployment of the frontal SIR system. The EFS is different from the forward discriminating sensor that was used in previous SIR systems. It is not a mechanical switch device, but instead operates entirely electronically. We'll review the EFS function in more detail a little later. The EFS is typically mounted at the front of the vehicle on the radiator core support where it provides early detection of the intensity of a frontal collision. Some police and other specialty vehicles may use a second electronic frontal sensor. Like a conventional frontal SIR system, the dual stage system uses two front inflator modules, the steering wheel inflator module and the instrument panel inflator module. Each dual stage inflator module consists of a housing, a single inflatable airbag, two initiating devices, a canister of gas generating material, and in some cases, stored compressed gas. The two initiators are part of the frontal deployment loops. The steering wheel module coil assembly is attached to the steering column and is located under the steering wheel. The steering wheel module coil consists of two or more current carrying coils. The coils maintain continuous electrical contact between the driver deployment loop and the steering wheel module while the steering wheel is turned. On vehicles equipped with dual stage airbags, four coil wires are used for the steering wheel module deployment loop. Additional coil wires are used for accessories attached to the steering wheel depending on the vehicle model. Finally, there are the wiring harnesses which connect the inflator modules, SDM, deployment loops, and class two serial data together using weather pack connectors. As on other systems, dual stage SIR system connectors are yellow in color for easy identification. The steering wheel module coil connector is located near the base of the steering column. The connector contains a shorting bar that shorts the steering wheel module coil deployment loop circuitry to prevent unwanted deployment of the airbag when servicing the inflator module. 
Well, those are the components. Now, let's look at how they work together to operate the dual stage SIR system. As we've mentioned, the SDM is the electronic brain or control center for the entire SIR system. The SDM in a dual stage SIR system performs the same key functions as it does in a conventional single stage SIR system. The SDM continuously monitors SIR circuits and electrical components, commands the operation of the airbag indicator, maintains energy reserves for SIR deployment, records and stores crash event information, communicates diagnostic information through a scan tool, and initiates deployment of the inflator modules. The SDM contains an accelerometer, a sensing device that converts vehicle velocity changes to an electrical signal. In the event of a frontal collision, the SDM receives a signal from the electronic frontal sensor, the EFS. The EFS is also an accelerometer. The signal from this accelerometer assists the SDM in determining the severity of the collision. The SDM compares these signals to a value stored in memory. When the generated signals exceed the stored value, the SDM will cause current to flow through the frontal deployment loops, simultaneously deploying the frontal airbags. For moderate frontal collisions, the SDM deploys the inflator modules at less than full deployment, also referred to as low deployment. For low deployment, only stage one of the inflator module is used, meaning only one of the two initiators is activated. For more severe frontal collisions, a full deployment is initiated, which consists of both stage one and stage two of the inflator module. As in a single stage SIR system, the current passing through the initiators ignites the material in the canister, producing a rapid generation of gas, and in some cases, the release of compressed gas. The gas produced from this reaction rapidly inflates the airbag which quickly deflates through the airbag vent holes and or the bag fabric. And that's how the dual stage airbag system operates. Except for the additional initiator in each of the front inflator modules, the components in operation are basically the same as a single stage SIR system. It follows then that diagnostic and repair procedures are also similar. But there's one very important exception. It's not possible to tell by inspecting a dual stage inflator module whether only a low, stage one, or full stage one and two deployment has occurred. So you must always handle dual stage inflator modules as you would an undeployed module. Don't try to judge the state of deployment by the degree of damage the vehicle has suffered. You just cannot tell. Now let's continue with diagnosis and repair beginning with a general caution. In order to avoid deploying the airbag when troubleshooting the SIR system, use only the equipment specified and the instructions given in service information. Failure to use the specified equipment as instructed could cause airbag deployment, personal injury to you or someone else, or unnecessary SIR system repairs. The first step in diagnosing the dual stage SIR is to follow the diagnostic system check in the service information for the specific vehicle. The diagnostic procedures in the charts will help you to find and repair SIR system malfunctions. The specific information may vary according to the vehicle model, but the basic procedures are similar. Typically, the first step of the diagnostic system check tests to ensure that the airbag indicator circuit is functioning correctly. As with standard SIR systems, when the ignition is turned on, the SDM is supplied with ignition positive voltage. Typically, as on this vehicle, the SDM requests the IPC to flash the airbag indicator seven times. While flashing the indicator, 
the SDM conducts tests on all SIR system components and circuits. If no malfunctions are detected, the SDM communicates with the IPC through the Class II serial data circuit and commands the airbag indicator off. If a malfunction is detected, the SDM signals a DTC to be stored and commands the airbag indicator on to alert the driver of the condition. Steps 2 and 3 test to see if the scan tool powers up and can communicate properly with the SDM. Steps 4 and 5 test to see if current or history SIR or vehicle communications DTCs are present. Communication codes are indicated by a U prefix. If any DTC is present, the diagnostic circuit check will direct you to the DTC list in SI2000. Because of the SIR system's extensive self-monitoring capabilities and Class II architecture, there are several DTCs relating to all of the major circuits and components. For example, in this DTC list for the 2001 LeSabre, DTCs B0012 through B0018 relate to the IP inflator module deployment circuits. Other DTCs in the list relate specifically to the Stage 1 and Stage 2 deployment circuits for the individual modules and other components such as the EFS. The SDM provides input power to the EFS. When input power is first detected, the EFS responds by performing internal diagnostics. Next, the EFS sends an ID message to the SDM. The SDM will consider this to be a valid ID if the response time is less than five seconds after the EFS is powered up. The EFS will continually communicate a status message to the SDM. If the SDM receives a not okay status message from the EFS and ignition positive voltage is within the normal operating voltage range, it will set a DTC B0101. If a DTC B0101 is present and current, step three of the service information chart for this code will instruct you to replace the EFS. On a related note, you may notice that in SI2000, the EFS is also referred to as the Inflatable Restraint Front End Discriminating Sensor. This is the name used by GM SPO for the EFS, and the name that you would use for ordering a replacement part. Remember also when checking DTCs on the dual stage SIR system, some codes cannot be erased from memory. As on previous systems, these are referred to as latch codes. For example, DTC B0051 is set along with an individual module DTC when the SDM detects a frontal impact of sufficient force to deploy the frontal inflator module or a side impact of sufficient force to deploy a side inflator module. If you find this code present during your diagnosis, check the inflator modules for any signs of previous deployment. Also, inspect the vehicle for any evidence of impact or a collision. If any SIR sensor or the area where it is mounted is damaged, the sensor must be replaced. The SIR, Side Airbag Sensor Replacement Policy, requires replacing sensors in the area of accident damage. The area of accident damage is defined as the portion of the vehicle that is crushed, bent, or damaged due to a collision. Also remember to observe all cautions relating to SIR-related collision repairs. Caution. Proper operation of the Supplemental Inflatable Restraint Sensing System requires that any repairs to the vehicle structure return the vehicle structure to the original production configuration. Not properly repairing the vehicle structure could cause non-deployment of the airbag or bags in a frontal collision or deployment of the airbag or bags for conditions less severe than intended. Also, if the area where the sensor is mounted is damaged, 
such as the radiator support where the EFS is mounted, it must be repaired so the new sensor can be properly located in its original position. Incidentally, the retaining fastener for the EFS on this vehicle has a left-hand thread. If the modules have not deployed and there are no signs of a collision, the SDM may have set the code in error, in which case it should be replaced. When an SDM is replaced, the body control module, or the dash integration module, on vehicles so equipped must be reprogrammed to recognize the new SDM RPO configuration. If the BCM does not recognize the SDM, the airbag indicator will illuminate. You may recall a bulletin was released concerning programming. When a PCM, or another body control type module, is replaced, the VIN information must be programmed into the new control module. VIN information can only be entered into new modules, not ones taken from another vehicle. The ignition must be on in order to program the control module. Since the VIN information is broadcast when the ignition goes to on from any other ignition switch position, DTCs may be set in the SDM and or the radio. Therefore, always follow the specified control module replacement procedures. After completing the repair, turn on the ignition and check for DTCs using a scan tool. If DTCs B1001, B1271, or B1780 are present with a history status, do not replace the SDM or the radio. Please refer to this bulletin for details. Ensure the proper operation of the SDM by turning off the ignition and then turning on the ignition. The airbag warning indicator should flash seven times and then go off. Now let's consider a situation you may encounter where a vehicle equipped with a dual stage SAR system has been involved in a collision of sufficient force to deploy the front modules. As I mentioned earlier, special precautions are required when handling a deployed dual stage inflator module. As it contains two initiating devices, one of which may not be deployed, the unit should always be treated as a live module. As always, you must disable the SIR system before attempting to remove or service the inflator module. Turn the steering wheel so that the vehicle's wheels are pointing straight ahead. Then turn the ignition switch to the off position and remove the key from the ignition switch. Remove the SIR fuse from the fuse block. As you may know, on the LeSabre, the fuse block is located under the rear seat. Remove the sound insulator panel to gain access to the driver side wiring harness connectors. Remove the connector position assurance from the driver yellow connector located below the steering column. Then disconnect the driver frontal airbag yellow connector from the vehicle harness connector. Disconnecting the connectors activates the shorting bar, which shorts across the deployment loops for the two initiators and prevents unwanted deployment. Except for the additional connectors, the procedures for removing a deployed or undeployed dual stage module are the same as for an undeployed single stage module. Follow all the handling procedures and cautions detailed in service information for an undeployed module. Tools you'll need for dual stage module deployment are a J39401-B deployment fixture, J38826 SIR deployment harness, J38826-75 steering wheel module adapter for dual stage airbags, and a J38826-80 IP module adapter also for dual stage airbags. After removal, place the inflator module with the trim cover or the deployed airbag facing up and away from the surface on a workbench. Make sure no loose or flammable objects are in the area. Clear a space on the ground about 1.85 meters or 6 feet in diameter for module deployment. 
If possible, use a paved outdoor location free of activity. Otherwise, use a space free of activity on the shop floor. Make sure you have sufficient ventilation and use hearing protection. If you have a steering wheel inflator module, place the inflator module in the center of the space. If you have an IP inflator module, place the J39401-B SIR deployment fixture in the center of the cleared area. Fill the deployment fixture with water or sand. Using the proper nuts and bolts, mount the IP module to the deployment fixture with the trim facing up. Tighten all fasteners that hold the IP module to the deployment fixture. Inspect the J38826 and the appropriate pigtail adapter for damage. Replace as needed. Short the two SIR deployment harness leads together using one banana plug seated into the other. Then connect the appropriate pigtail adapter to the SIR deployment harness. Extend the SIR deployment harness and adapter to full length from the deployment fixture. If you have a steering wheel inflator module, connect the inflator module to the adapter on the SIR deployment harness. On the dual stage inflator module, it is important that both connectors are attached to the deployment harness adapter. This will ensure that both stage one and stage two of the deployment loops are energized regardless of the deployment state. Place a 12-volt power source, such as a vehicle battery, near the shorted end of the harness. The rapid expansion of gas involved with deploying an inflator module is very loud. It is important to notify all the people in the immediate area that you intend to deploy the inflator module. With the area cleared of people, Separate the two banana plugs on the SIR deployment harness and connect the SIR deployment harness wires to the power source. Inflator module deployment will occur when contact is made. With a previously undeployed module, the module or deployment fixture may jump about 30 centimeters or a foot vertically. This is a normal reaction due to the force of the rapid expansion of gas inside the inflator module. The pigtail connectors may sustain damage during deployment. If you are deploying a dual stage inflator module with stage one already deployed, the module or deployment fixture may not move and the noise may be reduced since only the initiator for stage two is deployed. If the inflator module did not deploy, disconnect the adapter and discontinue the procedure. Contact the Technical Assistance Center. After a successful deployment, proceed to the following steps. After an airbag deploys, the metal surfaces of the inflator module are very hot. To help avoid a fire or personal injury, allow sufficient time for cooling before touching any metal surface of the inflator module. It's a good idea to wear gloves. Also, do not place the deployed inflator module near any flammable objects. Seat one banana plug into the other in order to short the deployment harness leads. Then put on a pair of shop gloves and disconnect the pigtail adapter from the inflator module as soon as possible. Inspect the pigtail adapter and the SIR deployment harness and replace them if they are damaged. Dispose of the deployed inflator module through normal refuse channels. When you're finished, wash your hands with a mild soap. Well, that wraps up our presentation for today. The dual stage SIR system adds another level of safety for GM vehicle owners who are involved in collisions of moderate force. Our customers expect and deserve safe, dependable operation. When a condition arises, your ability to quickly and accurately diagnose and make repairs can reinforce a positive attitude toward GM vehicles in general, and your dealership in particular. For more information, see the book that accompanies this video. The booklet also contains a test. The instructions for taking the test are coming up next. Thanks for watching. For GM Service Operations, I'm Lynn McCall.
All testing for the GM Service Know-How program is now accomplished through the GM Service Technical College website. The interactive voice response system is no longer active. To receive credit for this course, please access the GM Service Technical College website at www.gmstc.com and select Training Management from the menu. This will take you to the Training Management System. A valid username and password are required for this portion of the site. Once you have been granted access to the system, select the Tests option. From here, you will be presented a list of available tests. Select the test you wish to take and follow the prompts. This testing procedure provides immediate results at the completion of the test and is linked to the GM Service Technical College Training Management System. Your opinions and suggestions are welcome as a way to improve future GM Service know-how releases. A survey form is available at the end of the course test.